Hello class, today we're going to be talking about the menstrual cycle. Um, I think it's really important that we do learn about the menstrual cycle because half the population experience it and it's also a critical a hormonal process to understand um, many illnesses and also pregnancy. Um, so if we want to understand how pregnancy occurs, we have to understand the menstrual cycle. And also many female experience problem with the menstrual cycle. So um, it is important that we do take time to understand it. Um, so let's start with this slide, looking at the female menstrual cycle. So this video, we're going to talk about the overview of how this cycle works. So if you look at the pathway, the pathway is part of the HP hypothalamus pituitary um, ovarian axis. So it's the HPO axis. And here we're looking at the hypothalamus making gonadotropin releasing hormone, which stimulates the pituitary gland to either make LH or FSH. We'll go into more detail what these hormones do later on, but these hormones act on the ovary, which allows the follicles to grow and develop the eggs, and that will release estrogen and progesterone to affect the uterus. Of course, the whole pathway feeds on itself so that you can regulate a homeostasis of some sort of the cycle to make sure there is um, the correct coordination of the brain, the ovary, and the uterus to make it perfect for implantation. So if you look at, I know this is hard to read, but we'll go into this many, many more details. So I just want you to see overall changes. You can see how hormone cycle up and down and up, right? You have up and down of the hormones FSH and LH here from made by the pituitary. We also see up and down of the estrogen and progesterone. But at the same time, as you can see the FSH LH changing, we see in the ovary, the eggs are cycling through its stages. But as the egg cycles through its stages, the timing of the uterus has to be perfect to as the eggs grow, the uterus has to prepare so that when the ovulation occurs and fertilization occurs, the uterus is perfect for implantation at the correct stage. And of course, um, we'll talk about how if implantation or pregnancy doesn't occur, then we have menstruation, okay? So that's kind of general overview, but I want to go into a little bit more detail at each segment, how that works. Okay, and we'll break all this down, so don't worry if you didn't get all of it. So let's first look at the hormones made by the hypothalamus and the pituitary. We mentioned that the hypothalamus releases a home hormone called GnRH, or gonadotropin-releasing hormone. That hormone stimulates the production of two hormones, and that is um, FSH, follicle-stimulating hormone, and LH, okay? So for general remembering, these two hormones are called gonadotropins, stimulation of the gonad, okay? So FSH here is important for follicle development, follicle-stimulating hormone, right? And LH, luteinizing hormone, is important for ovulation. Okay, so these two hormones are going to control the ovary to make sure the ovary is developing the follicle and ovulating at the correct time. And depending on the cycle, um, it can happen at various times. So just to mention, we're using the 28-day cycle because that's the average. But in the typical female, any anything between 21 days and 40 days is considered normal. So here we're looking at day one here, cycling to day 28. So if you have a 21-day cycle, it just means that this part, one, will actually cycle to about day seven, and then you'll end with 21 days, okay? So um, depending on the length of the cycle, you can see how it changes. The difference really comes in the first follicular phase on how long it takes a female to mature a follicle and ovulate that follicle. After ovulation, which occurs here, then the 
the cycle is almost always about 14 days. Okay, so in a 21 day cycle, the follicular phase is about seven days. In a um, 35 day cycle, um, this will be 21 days. So it's just a little extra information, but it gives you some idea why um, female and the cycle takes longer or shorter. And also your cycle might vary from month to month. One month, it might be 28. The other month would be 30 days. So there is a little bit of variability depending on how long it takes for the follicle to mature and ovulate. Okay, so let's get on with the ovary. So inside the ovary, remember, when, when you look at the inside the ovary, you're going to see little follicles, okay? Those follicles is what's producing the hormone estrogen and progesterone. Okay, so as you can see, as the, the, the follicles in the ovary grow with the FSH, so as you can see, as FSH is higher here, the follicle is developing from primary follicle to secondary. So this is the key function of follicle stimulating. After the follicles in mature, uh, in secondary and mature follicle stage, then it's ready for ovulation on, here on day 14, uh, 28 day cycle. So ovulation, the hormone really important for ovulation is then LH. But you have to have a mature follicle in order for ovulation to occur. So there is a coordination between FSH and LH. After ovulation, then you have the formation of the corpus luteum. Okay, and then if implantation does not occur, then you'll have corpus albicans and the development of the new follicle and the whole cycle then starts again back at primary. You cycle through, okay? So that is what's going on in the ovary. You go through these ovarian stages through all the 28-day cycle or through all your, uh, the female cycle. Well, when the ovaries are making these follicles, the, the follicles are making hormone. So remember from the last slide, we have here, we have primary follicle. I'm just going to write one, zero, primary. As the follicle becomes a secondary follicle here, then the secondary follicle is able to make the hormone estrogen. So you can see estrogen going up as the follicle is in secondary and mature follicle stage. So you can see the estrogen change. Ovulation is happening at this point. So when the mature follicle is ovulated, so you can see here's mature follicle hormone stage and here's ovulation, then the follicle will make the corpus luteum. And at this corpus luteum stage, the follicle is making progesterone and it's continuing the production of estrogen. Okay, so you have progesterone and estrogen. Well, what does the two hormones do? Estrogen promotes growth, okay? So estrogen is promoting the growth of the endometrium. So as you can see, when the female is menstruating here, the, the uterine lining is right here, right? So as estrogen is produced here, you can see here estrogen is produced, then the uterine lining will start growing. So as estrogen increases, either in lining grows more, okay? And when progesterone comes along, what progesterone does is that progesterone is going to increase the secretion and the vascularization of the tissue. So now the tissue is nice and thick and well vascularized. So you can see ovulation happen at day 14 as the egg is fertilized and moving along the fallopian tube and, the uter uh, and into the uterus, implantation is perfect right here. Okay, so if implantation happens, then the woman will not menstruate, right? And you'll go into the pregnancy cycle. If implantation did not occur, then the woman will go into PMS and menstruation here. But you can see the hormone is guiding what is happening in the uterus. And also, the, the hormones are made by the ovary. So in a sense, the ovarian follicle is telling the uterus uh, what to do to prepare for its implantation and pregnancy. 
Okay, so in a summary, you can see how the hormones work together through the hypothalamus pituitary axis. Okay, you can see it drawn on here, but I'll take a moment to summarize it in the next slide so you can follow along on the drawing. Okay, so let's take a look at drawing it all here. So we have what's what we have is the H P O axis. So the hormones are um, directed. So your body, your brain will send signals to make sure that the cycle has a homeostasis. For example, when a woman is particularly stressed and doesn't have enough food to eat or is ill, um, the cycle may not continue. Okay, and so the brain is constantly interpreting information to make sure the menstruation pregnancy is um, is a good time to do that. Okay, so the hypothalamus will release a hormone called GnRH. GnRH stimulates, so it's released by the hypothalamus and stimulates the pituitary gland to make two hormones and that is FSH and LH at different times, okay? You're gonna simulate that at different times. So we're gonna see these two hormones and they both have a positive response on the ovary. In response to FSH, you have follicle development. Okay, and, and as to what is going on is the follicle is going from primary stage, first stage, to secondary stage, and then to mature. Once the follicle is mature, it needs to ovulate. And at this point, the LH is what's going to stimulate that mature follicle, okay, to ovulate out of the ovary into the fallopian tube. Okay, so that's what's going on. This is going to be in the fallopian tube and can get fertilized, right? But as the follicle grows from secondary to mature, what the follicle is producing, let me just write it on here, is estrogen. I'll just abbreviate estrogen and progesterone, depending on what the stage. The progesterone is made by when we have a corpus lumen. Okay. So we have estrogen and then progesterone. Okay, produce. Estrogen, so now we're looking at the uterus, the endometrium. Estrogen promotes the, the um, uterus, the uterine lining, the endometrium to grow. So this is looking at endometrium. And then progesterone is gonna have effect of filling or thickening um, the endometrial lining. So these two hormones are really important in preparing the womb for implantation. Of course, estrogen and progesterone to some extent has a way of feeding back, negative feedback to the pituitary gland, but we'll go through each of that step by step. But so far, I just wanted to summarize to see how this works. Okay, so you can see how this all works, but do understand that estrogen and progesterone do have a feedback mechanism. Okay, uh, I want you to take these first six slides or so, and then the video, and I want you to really think about the three hormones. I did one for you right here. Where, what organ or tissue or cell produces um, the hormone, what is the target tissue and what is the target action of the hormone, okay? Um, so you can see um, reviewing the six overview of the men menstrual cycle.